All right, everybody, it's Sam Kwok here, one of the Kwok Brothers. And this is Daniel Kwok. And welcome to the Kwok Brothers Weekend Edition, where we're just going to close out the week yep. and talk about what happened in the economy, what's happening, and just kind of summarize, summarizing what's been going on. Before we dive into the show, we want to thank our sponsor, Rentometer.com. Rentometer.com is a great place to go find out how much rent should you charge if you're a landlord or a property manager. If you have rental properties, you definitely don't want to charge the wrong amount for your rent. So go to rentometer.com, punch in your address and find out exactly what rent you should charge based on the average market data. So uh, I'm going to pose the question of, did we just dodge the bullet of a recession? And this is coming from the fact that uh, Wall Street Journal is reporting a lot of good news about the economy. I mean, just last night, you guys seen how even the stock market's doing, cryptocurrency market's doing. Uh, we just picked up a news article. There's several news articles that we'll unpack today and just kind of go into uh, the commentary mode. But Wall Street Journal is saying that uh, Federal Reserve economists suggest that small businesses uh, have not experienced that bad of a, a failure or that bad of a closure. And I, I've seen another news where last month in March, we just added a, I think, a surge of new jobs in places like California, Texas, and New York. So that be begs the question, where is this recession that we were all anticipating is it still coming or did you do we dodge the bullet is a question. Yeah, I mean, Nick, what do you think about this, man? I mean, I've got a lot of thoughts about this, but I want, I want to get to you first. Um, hi, everybody. I, it's hard for me to say. I'm kind of like torn between the idea of, you know, people like were self-sustained throughout this whole thing or, you know, a lot of government programs and stuff helped. So, I mean, I, I'm kind of like thinking like long term, like what's the long term ramifications? Like, yeah, do we dodge a recession or we did just like you know, as you would say, kick the can down the road. Yeah, I mean, I think we kick the can down the road. I think it's it's very yeah. plain and simple. You look at the art, amount of artificial money that's being poked, poked into the economy right now. Yeah. Um, the Fed is buying right now at a monthly rate $120 billion worth of bonds, mm -hmm. right? So $80 billion that is treasury and $40 billion that is mortgage-backed securities. Now, if you look at those two things, those are what contributes to low interest rates, which obviously goes directly to the consumer. But if you look at the way that the stock market has been operating, if you look at the way the housing market's been operating, all these pushes are artificial. They're artificial pushes, and we have yet to see the consequences. There's no way any of this is sustainable. Mm -hmm. I think we have to agree with that fact. I don't know. So, I mean, I've got a little bit more thoughts here, but I, Sam, what do you think? Yeah, so I'm just going to give you guys, kind of feed you guys with more news, and hopefully this we can kind of fan the flame a little bit. Uh, so right now, uh, across the United States, we added uh, approximately 916,000 new jobs just in March alone. So that's nearly a million new jobs. And I wouldn't say new because probably these jobs were pro closed during the COVID-19 process and they were basically resurrected. Um, so we can't really say all oh, these were new jobs because, well, these were jobs that were closed down in the first place. Right. So uh, Wall Street Journal was reporting that for March. Uh, they also just what I mentioned earlier, um, they're basically saying that small businesses really didn't t take it that big of a hit uh, throughout the pandemic. And we're seeing retail sales go up. Uh, I can't find that, find that article right now, but basically retail sales, yeah, sales, retail sales up. went up 9.8%. That's, yeah, that's the that's figure huge. I believe you're referring to if you're talking about a month right. over month basis. But here's a question I have for you guys. Why? Why is there a surge in 9.8% in retail sales? Because obviously one of the biggest job losses were restaurants. Yeah. hotels and retail well no one's asking the question what was the aggregate loss and gain meaning how much did we actually lose during the coronavirus pandemic and with this new gain where are we so if, if we're looking at a chart if we drop this low but you know we bet went back up this much well we're still this wide of a gap between where we were before the pandemic and where we are now and to celebrate that yeah it's, that's that's really great i mean we're getting better but is that an indication that we've dodged the recession is is the really broader question at, at hand. Yeah. So to give you guys an idea, March of 2019, do you guys know the significance of March 2019? No. So March of 2019, that, you know, that was not our birthday. That was not, you yeah. know, that not, there was nothing personal and significant. But March of 2019 was the mark that started off, right? As of March 2019, the, the market in the United States and the economy, this is the longest that we've gone without a market correction. That's the longest we've gone without a recession. Think about March of 2019. That was over two years ago. We yeah. are now in April of 2021, mm -hmm. meaning that it has now been two years since we've had the longest, what's known as a bull run, mm -hmm. right? In the history of the United States. 
Meaning that it had to, it has to end somehow. Yeah. Right. Before we had 2008, then we had early 2000, then we had the late 80s. Right. So if you look at historically speaking, this is the longest that we've gone without a recession. And not only that, but this is also the first time unprecedented that we've had this amount of money, trillions of dollars, guys, in PPP loans, stimulus checks. Uh, I mean, you name it. The program goes, you know, and the, the amount of uh, who who uh, since when do we have forbearance? programs mm -hmm. in 2008 we let all these mortgages go to foreclosure with no ifs ands or buts but yeah. now we got for you know now we have forbearance now we have pp we have stimulus so this is unprecedented now here's the big question the big the million dollar question that people need to ask themselves is is all this trillions of dollars going towards sustainable growth is that going towards sustainable growth yes or no what do you guys think <sighs> Probably no, definitely not. Um, and like we were alluding to earlier, the, we we literally just kicked the can down the road. We really did. Um, part of what I say, w w why I like to say that is because, well, number one, everything that's right now, let's talk about real estate, right? Everything that's happening right now in real estate is all phantom appreciation, right? The rates are at zero. That certainly motivated and incentivized people to go purchase, and if not, refinance. Um, and we basically give, given everybody free money at this point, a lot of free money, you know, trillions of dollars of free money. And we got this current administration that's considering doing a, a first time home buyer purchase credit of $15,000. So it's, it's just continuing sign that this is not an organic growth, but this is purely phantom growth based on, well, people who necessarily don't have business or naturally didn't have the thought of buying real estate or not buying real estate. And that is certainly driving up the cost or the value of the properties. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't see this end very well. Um, and I think, did we dodge the bullet? Yes, but I think that bullet's going to come around and hit us in the back. So let's let's talk about housing because right at the end of the day, we are we do focus a lot on real estate. Yes. You know, you and I are real estate investors. We yeah. do have our own private equity firm, which if you guys are accredited investors and you want to see what opportunities we do have, yeah, let us know. But let's talk about housing. I think the housing market's going to crash. Not this mm -hmm. year. I used to say it was this year because I looked at a lot of, you know, I didn't, I didn't account for government intervention. Yeah. I didn't account. But I think the housing market's going to crash. If it is going to crash, I believe it's going to crash late next year or early 2023. Yeah. And here's why, right? Look at the price of lumber right now. Mm -hmm. The price of lumber went up 250% the last 12 months. Yeah. If you're talking about crude oil, if you're talking about siding material, if you're talking about all these different things that go into a house, they went up 80%, 80% in the last six, six to eight months. Yeah. If you look at copper, copper's up 33% in the last six months. Mm -hmm. If you look at historically the cost of building material, if you think about why there's such low inventory right now, number one, it's because there's not as much homes on the market because of uh, forbearance, yeah. because of a lot of financial fear. People don't want to make a big decision during a pandemic. I understand. Mm -hmm. But it's also because it's very hard to build. There's, it's yeah. very tough for new homes to get on the market because the cost of materials are so high. And not only cost of materials, but also the cost of labor. Yeah. You guys know the ratio between labor and materials? $1.28 for labor equals to a dollar in material, typically, right. yeah. in, in, a new, in a new build. Right? If you're talking about building, if your materials cost you $100,000, your labor is going to cost you $128,000. Mm -hmm. That's typically the ratio. So we're not even talking about labor right now, which labor is even more expensive simply because they're more in demand, mm -hmm. right? If you, and there's a lot that goes into it, right? I mean, millennials, we are the generation, right? Me, you, Nick, right? We're the generation with the fewest amount of percentage of people going into trades. So there's a yeah. lot of different moving parts here, but ultimately, let me, let me, let me circle around, right? Let me uh, come full circle with this to get to the point here. The reason why I say late 2023 is because whenever you see historically high prices in lumber, materials, copper, crude oil, you name it. Six to nine months later, the manufacturing industry adjusts too far. Mm -hmm. The pendulum goes too far to the other side. And a lot of times you have an oversupply. My prediction is that by the end of this year or pot potentially uh, going into next year, you're going to see a lot of inventory balance out. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of these mortgages and forbearance who, yes, a lot of them were optional. A lot of people didn't have to take forbearance. They just chose to take forbearance. I understand that, you know, but a lot of mortgages are going to enter into foreclosure, short sales, even if it's 5%, 3%, you're talking about a good number of, yeah. of mortgages still, even at that rate, you're going to have a lot of houses going back into inventory. You're going to see some new builds going into the inventory. I believe it's going to balance out. And then you're going to have a position where oversupply is going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. And you're potentially going to see too many homes being built. 
So to wrap it all up, look at what happened with multifamily. Yeah. In 2015, 16, and 17, we saw year over year record highs in multifamily units being built. Yeah. We went from 333, I think it was a 333,000 units being built, mm -hmm. and it just climbed all the way up to the point where we almost got to 400,000 new units being built. Yeah. Pay attention to that number mm -hmm. and the price of lumber. Yeah. Right? The, 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 manu the lumber manufacturing industry is like, you know what? They can't sustain this growth of multifamily. They, don't, they didn't know that there was an affordable housing crisis issue. And then they, they recognized it. I was like, oh, you know what? You know, the price of, look at back in 2018, mm -hmm. price of lumber was very high. Yeah. Very high, almost near where it is today. And then it over adjusted. The pendulum went on the other side and then it dropped. It dropped and then it, it made a slow incline to where today it's, it's peaked. Yeah, absolutely. So that all to say, um, yeah, I, I think we've definitely kicked the kicked the can down the road, and and um, it would have been this year. And I think a lot of the, it has to do a lot with the government intervention, um, stimulus money for barons. Uh, we talked about how um, we're going to see potentially see millions of homeowners exit out of forbearance, and many of them have already. Uh, but we're going to see millions that are still kind of straggling along in September. And that's what we need to pay attention to is come end of this year and potentially early next year, uh, because CFPB is talking about delaying any foreclosure of all Fannie Mae and Fred Mac and FHA uh, mortgages, delaying all foreclosures till the early 2022. So, yeah. well, think about the biggest issue here, too. Remember yeah. when you and I. Uh, we're in Johnny D's office, uh -huh. right? Shout out to our good friend, Johnny D. Yeah, right? Johnny that's our, yeah. Remember when we were, when it was 2018, summer of 2018, we were in Johnny D's office and he yeah. showed us the amount of 10-year treasury that was oh, the reset. due, yeah, right? That, kind of reset, that was yeah. issued out in 2010. I believe there was what, uh, close to, I don't know how many trillions, but yeah. there, was, there was trillions of dollars in 10-year treasury that were issued in 2010. Yeah. The Obama administration did right. that to respond to the Great Recession. And they were coming due in 2020. They were coming due in 2020. And ironically, COVID-19 comes in 2020. 20, right. And, and, and guess decides, what the Fed does? Yeah, it prints a crap ton of money. And, 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 right. Know, well, not only that, crazy. but the, the Fed starts buying up the 10-year treasury like crazy. Yeah. They're buying so, up $80 billion every month. Ooh, now we're getting into conspiracy. Uh -oh. Right? Uh -oh. 80, oh, here guys, we go. We're getting into the guys, mode. exposing the financial truth. <laughs> yeah. But, but think they bought they bought how many hundreds of billions of dollars worth of treasury debt. They're right. on a rampage right now of buying 80 billion every yeah. every month, ever yeah. since the start of December. They're not anticipating to stop that, by the way. Uh so you gotta you gotta start thinking, right? It's like, hmm, 2020, these just trillions of dollars worth of 10-year treasury debt was due, by the way. Yeah. To the point where the interest accrued on these were almost matched the GDP of the country. Yeah. Um in, ter in terms of performance, I believe. Yeah. Right? Well, it's so, funny you say that because Jerome Powell, the, the Federal Reserve Chairman, came out and said uh, they will begin reducing bond purchases uh, well before raising interest rates. Yeah. They, will, they, they purchase bonds to make sure interest rates stay low. Yeah. They want the economy. They want inflation. I yeah. get it. I, I understand that, but I think something's going to happen before then. But anyways, right. any any final thoughts, Nick? Yeah, I got I got something to add. And, and not, not so much as like a point of contention, but um, I, I read something the other day saying that a lot of people with the stimulus money, they're using it to pay off like their consumer debts and stuff mm. like that. How do you feel like that contributes to the problem? Do you think like, you know, this this, uh, you know, government, you know, spending with with us with the stimulus? Do you think that's going to like be good or bad for the like regular everyday consumers? Well, I think it's uh, ultimately it's going to be come back. The government's going to figure out how to balance the books somehow. They, they have to. And one of the big ways is to jack the taxes up. That's it. That, it. That's that's one lever of which they can control how how, how could how they could balance the, the books. I mean, I, they print a trillion of dollars accumulating uh, debt. I mean, it is it's it's not very healthy. So one of the ways they have, they have to do it, and they have the means to do it, and they could do it. It's just you know what they're gonna you know what they're gonna increase yeah. taxes on mm. retirement accounts. Mm. I, I guarantee you guys mm. that just watch. Yeah, watch watch what happens in the next 12 to 18, 24 months. They're going to start drastically increasing the taxes on retirement. Guys, there's over $20 trillion in retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. You don't think they're trying to go after that? Yeah. You know, we already know Social Security is going to go bankrupt. They're yeah. going to deplete that. They're going to start taxing retirement accounts. Watch. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So with that being said, we're going to wrap it up. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And this is a little chat that uh, all three of us got to have. Uh, we'll most likely do this every weekend, uh, just hanging out and, yeah. you know, talking well, jo about Join the chat. Truth. Comment down below. What yeah. do you guys think about? We talked about a, a flurry of things, right? right? Did we dodge the recession? We talked about housing markets, the cost of materials. Yeah. We talked about 
you know, the 10 year treasury and the, the US government. We got a little deep. Yeah. Right, in a little there. Cool. I, I, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, coincidence. Uh, I, I think not. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, I hope you guys yeah. uh, enjoyed this. Uh, we kind of replaced this with our live show, um, kind of compressing everything into like a 10 to 15 minute format. So that being said, to wrap everything up, guys, I hope you enjoyed this show and enjoyed our weekend edition. Uh, come back next week. We'll be doing this again. Uh, just another reminder, subscribe to our channel, like this video as our channel is dedicated to exposing financial truth that only the one top 1% know so that you too have a fair opportunity to build your wealth. That's right. Have a good weekend, guys. Take care.